Wi-Fi scanning and reconnaissance is the first thing penetration testers do to find a way to get into a corpus network. In this video, we'll learn how you can scan for wireless access points around you and how you can obtain useful information about these access points. We will use the Aircrack suite, which comes installed on Kali Linux. I'm assuming that you have a Kali virtual machine running on VirtualBox, and you have a reliable Wi-Fi USB adapter like the one that I will show you here. We are here in the virtual machine using VirtualBox. I will start by going to the terminal and typing up the airmon-ng command. It will not show any available Wi-Fi devices on this machine. This is why it doesn't display any useful information. Now, let us go to the USB icon at the bottom of the VM window and attach the RA Link wireless adapter. Then wait until there is a red circle on the USB icon, which means that the Wi-Fi USB device has been successfully attached to the VM. And now, if we type airmon-ng and press enter again, it should display the device for us. It will take some time and you should notice what is the name of the interface that it displays to you. Usually it's WLAN 0, sometimes it's WLAN 1 or 2, but usually it's WLAN 0. To put that into monitor mode, we type airmon-ng start WLAN 0 and that turns it into monitor mode. This command will take some time until it displays the new name for the interface in monitor mode, which is usually the same name of the interface, but with mon at the end. So on this screen, you can see that it has been turned into WLAN 0 mon. We can now use this interface to scan for the wireless access points around us. And this will be using the arrow dump dash ng command and giving it the name of the monitor interface that it should use. So by typing aerodump-ng, wlan0mon, and pressing enter, you will start looking for the access points around you. And if you inspect this terminal now carefully, you will see that the channel on the top left part of the terminal is changing, and the list of ESSIDs, which are network names, are growing as more channels are being scanned. The MAC address of each access point is listed under the BSSID column. So you can see that there are multiple very similar MAC addresses here, and this is essentially due to the fact that these access points may have been purchased together from the same vendor. For example, the BSSIDs starting with ACA31E D677 and ending with these different numbers, which are 06, 04, 07, 03, 05, 02, and 08, belong to the same manufacturer and most probably have been purchased at the same time and from the same vendor. This is why the beginning part of their MAC addresses for these access points is the same. The power column is the signal level detected by the card you're using for the scanning. The higher the signal gets, the closer you are to the access point. So an access point with a negative 40 power signal is closer to us than an access point with a negative 80 power signal. A live example here is the HHS access point that has a negative 69 power signal is closer to us than the TMS access point, which has a negative 84 power signal. One very useful thing that you can do when the screen just keeps changing access points for you and drives you crazy because you cannot focus on the information you wanna keep looking at is that if you press the space bar on your keyboard, then you can pose the screen output. Scanning is still happening, but the output is posed for you such that you can keep looking at the screen as much as you want. Beacons are packets sent by the access point to announce itself to the stations around it. 
This is how your cell phone or laptop knows that there is a Wi-Fi station around it that it can connect to. The number of beacons that your card has detected so far is shown under the beacons column. The number of data is the amount of packets that are recognized as data that your card has detected so far for each access point. The channel column tells you which channel is used by the access point, which can be translated into a frequency range. The MB column lists the maximum speed supported by the access point. The INC column lists the encryption algorithm in use by the access point. If the access point does not require any kind of authentication for stations that connect to it, then OPN, which stands for open, will be listed here. This means that any client can connect to this access point. Let's go to the cipher column. So some Wi-Fi encryption algorithms support multiple ciphers. This column lists the cipher used by the access point with the encryption algorithm that it uses. The auth column shows the authentication protocol used by the access point. MGT usually means that the access point is using a separate authentication server. An example of that is when you connect an access point at a hotel and it prompts you with a screen that asks you to enter the room number and the guest's last name. It actually takes this information, sends it to a remote server, which is responsible for the authentication. And if it's correct, gives you access. If not, then you're not provided access. PSK indicates that the um, access point uses a pre-shared key. This pre-shared key is usually the password you enter to connect to the access point. And the ESSID is just the name of the access point you're connecting to, or the one that you can see when you scan for access points around you. Finally, to stop the command, you press Ctrl-C, and this just takes you back to the terminal.